Socrates was an attacking midfielder who captained the Brazil side in the 1982 World Cup, which is sometimes known as the best side never to win the World Cup. He was much more than a footballer though. He had a medical degree, he was known for his left-wing political views and fight for social justice, and with his distinctive headband and beard, became the symbol of cool for a whole generation of football supporters. His lifestyle also didn't fit with that of the modern sportsman. He was a big smoker and a big drinker, with a tendency to self-destruct and had a chaotic personal life, with abandoned wives and children he barely saw. In fact, he once described himself as an anti-athlete. He began to drink even more post-retirement, despite the fact that he had returned to medicine by this stage and was fully aware of the risks involved. He paid the price when he died at the age of just 57 as a result of a liver complaint. But when his passing was announced, tributes flowed in from all across Brazil. Unlike many great Brazilian players who grew up in the favelas like Rivaldo and Ronaldinho, Socrates came from an upper middle class family and studied medicine at university, becoming a doctor. He was also white in a society where many of his fellow citizens were dark skinned and uneducated. That meant that unlike some of his contemporaries, Socrates was not defined by his ability on a football pitch. The fact he was extremely good at it was an incidental extra. The Brazil team that began the 1982 World Cup in Spain captured the imagination of fans worldwide with their brand of free-flowing, sensuous football that drew inevitable comparisons with the team of Pelé that had won the World Cup in Mexico 12 years earlier. Indeed, there were many in Brazil who thought that the lineup included Zico and Falcao. Junior and Socrates himself were even better than that team. All that promise though withered on the vine in a sensational match against Italy in Barcelona, which saw a hat-trick from Paolo Rossi knock them out of the tournament. Socrates scored in that game, but in a country where World Cup success is all important, the perceived failure of Socrates and the rest of the team would haunt him for the rest of his life. Socrates didn't achieve many honours in his career. Indeed, his brother Rai had more success on the pitch winning the Brazilian League, the Copa Libertadores and the Continental Cup. Three regional championships with Corinthians were the summit of his achievements, although he was named South American Footballer of the Year in 1983. Unlike many great Brazilian footballers, Ronaldo, Rivaldo, Ronaldinho and Romario, Socrates did not have a great career in Europe. He waited until he was 30 before moving abroad to Serie A and Italy, but he lasted just one season with Fiorentina before returning home again. His one appearance aged 50 for Garforth Town of the Northern Counties East Football League against Tadchester Albion remains one of the more bizarre footnotes to his career, and it shouldn't necessarily be compared to his appearance in Italy, but here we are. Socrates began his career as a centre forward before reinventing himself as an attacking midfielder. He was known as an elegant, technically gifted playmaker who could play great through balls to the waiting strikers. Two-footed, he was also a prolific goal scorer himself, courtesy of a powerful right foot, as well as his late runs into the penalty area. An accurate penalty and dead ball player, his height made him excellent in the air and his signature move was the no-look pass. Whilst there have arguably been better footballers produced by Brazil, Socrates is still widely remembered today. In part, it was because of his charisma. Brazilian football has produced many great characters over the years, but few came bigger than him, with film star looks, style of play, a free spirit. And his bravery shouldn't be underestimated. At a time when Brazil was still governed by a repressive military dictatorship, he wasn't afraid to found his own party and fight for the restoration of democracy. He stated that his three childhood heroes were Fidel Castro, Che Guevara and John Lennon and never forgot the sight of his father burning certain books in his library following the coup d'etat that brought the military to power. Unlike some players whose legacy is clear, the case of Socrates is more nuanced and is partly overshadowed by his lifestyle off the pitch, inviting inevitable comparisons with George Best a decade or so earlier. And his career also came to be defined by what happened in Barcelona on that June afternoon in 1982. Had Brazil gone on to win that match and lift the World Cup, then his place as captain would have been secure in the country's history. As it is, that side is bracketed with the Hungary team of 1954 and the Dutch side 20 years later as the best teams to never win the World Cup. 
That though isn't to downplay what he did achieve on a football field and the sheer panache with which he did it. He played with a style and freedom that was a joy to watch. And the fact that most neutrals better remember that Brazil team than the Italy side that went on to win the tournament speaks volumes. He probably wouldn't have thrived in the modern game. His tendency to wander around the pitch where he wanted would have driven some managers mad, while his attitude to training and lax lifestyle would have been regarded as a poor influence on younger players. Yet for all that, he serves as a reminder of why football is still sometimes described as the beautiful game, and why more than a decade after his death, people are still watching YouTube compilations of him in action. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please press the like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any new uploads. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.